Become a premium member on realcatholictv.com today. Not only will you learn about the one true faith, just think of all the new friends you'll make. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Vores, coming to you from Sydney, Australia, at the beginning of a five-city tour for evangelization. We had a terrifically enthusiastic crowd of mostly young adults last night at the first conference at Our Lady of Lebanon Maronite Catholic Church here in Sydney. Young people thirsty for and excited to learn and drink in everything they can of the glory of the faith. You know, we started about 8 o'clock at night, and we were supposed to be done around 10, but it actually carried on until almost midnight when the parish maintenance staff finally said we had to leave. This is our first full trip, our first full day here down under. So we've come to the tomb of St. Mary MacKillop, Australia's first saint. She was canonized by our Holy Father on October 17, 2010 at St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Also known as St. Mary of the Cross, she founded the Sisters of St. Joseph of the Sacred Heart and a number of schools and welfare institutions throughout the country here in Australia with an emphasis on education for the poor, particularly in way out in the country areas. St. Mary of the Cross also has the distinction of having been excommunicated as a result of a flurry of church politics involving various members of the clergy vying for power and revenge and all that nonsense. During the time of her excommunication, she was forbidden from having any contact with anyone and had to take up and live with a Jewish family, even though she was privately offered shelter by some Jesuits as well. Now, in fairness to the bishop who excommunicated her, he was not in the diocese very much due to frequent illnesses and the difficulty of travel here in the 19th century. So he relied on, on information from his, from his staff, and among them were vengeful and jealous clerics who wanted to put the sisters out of business. In the end, however, the bishop did meet with her and from his deathbed ordered the excommunication lifted. I guess all's well that ends well, right? St. Mary of the Cross represents a sterling image for the church today. Here is a woman who set out for the wilderness of essentially the outback regions of Australia to start evangelizing and catechizing poor children. She stayed faithful, even to the point of never discarding her heavy woolen habit in what must have been roasting hot conditions for much of the year down here. And she did it all for the love of our Lord and her neighbors. In this case, in her circumstances, her neighbors were all of these children. MacKillop represents another aspect sorely lacking in the church these days, authentic feminism. We talk a lot about masculinity and the great, great need for its restoration in the body of Christ these days, but we can never overlook the need for true and authentic femininity as well. Not feminism, which is femininity distorted and perverted, but actual honest-to-God femininity, that quality of nurturing and bringing to life of compassion and tenderness also so sorely lacking today. St. Mary embodies this in her life and her suffering even at the hands of the church. As a famous author, in fact, once observed, sometimes you will suffer more from the church than for the church. This type of response embodies one of the beautiful traits of the feminine, the willingness to undergo quiet suffering out of love for the sake of the other, in the theological and spiritual order, for the sake of the salvation of another person. I know this firsthand from my own mother's not only willingness to endure suffering for the reversion of my brother and I to the faith, but from her actually praying for suffering in, able to, in order to accomplish that goal. Tremendously saintly women in the church are always, always indicated by the size of their cross and their willingness to bear it for those they love. The model par excellence of this, of course, is our Blessed Mother, the model of femininity. When our Lord was only days old, she heard the prediction from Simeon in the temple, and a sword thine own heart shall pierce, so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. Suffering for the other, sacrifice born out of love and the consequent nurturing that flows from it. This is authentic femininity. As lived out in the life of MacKillop, this means catechizing. For her, it meant catechizing, teaching others about the faith, sacrificing so that others would come to know and then love the truth of our Lord. In our own modern day ecclesiastical winter, we need intrepid souls, pioneers who will dare to go where others will not go 
and they will do this for the love of Jesus Christ and his holy church. In every age, our Lord raises up saints and preachers and prophets, so his will is done and people are not starving in the desert, or at least left starving in the desert. Are you willing to be such a person without people to teach the faith, not only an example, but also actually in practice to dedicate their lives to the act and art of teaching, being disciples, the faith can't spread. The work of teaching the catechism is absolutely foundational. Without it, a soul can't understand Sunday Mass. Even reading the Bible will be fraught with confusion and misunderstanding. How desperate is the world today for truth? It's desperate because enough of us have not stepped forward and committed our lives and our material blessings to the work of catechizing. This is what evangelization is. It's not some flowery document or some department downtown at church headquarters, although in some ways there is that sort of necessary dimension. But in reality, it is the zeal and love of the truth lived out in a heroic fashion, a fashion where a Catholic who really loves the faith because the church is Jesus Christ, forsakes other loves and dedicates himself or herself to learning the faith, studying it every day, immersing himself in the deep mysteries of divine knowledge and then transmitting that knowledge to others. Of course, the church needs people to live holy lives. We all, and I mean all, all of us need to do that, but the church also needs authentic catechists who know the truth of the faith because they know the one behind the truths of the faith and because they know him they love him. St. Mary of the Cross was such a person, and given the current condition of affairs in the church, she is a perfect model for us to reflect on as we consider, we, you and I, as we consider what we must and can do for the faith. Reporting from Sydney, Australia, at the tomb of St. Mary of the Cross, I'm Michael Voris. God love you.